Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about power system network matrices. Power system network matrices. So, uh, these network matrices are very useful in power system analysis. So, before starting the network uh, uh, matrices, we need to talk about graph, graph theory. So, before that, first of all, let me tell you what do you mean by graph. So, in order to describe the geometrical structure of a network, because in power system, it's a combination of different elements like generator, transformer, transmission lines, and so on. So, so many different elements are there and all were connected, interconnected. So, we, if we need to represent the geometrical structure of an, uh, any, any, any network, okay, it is very difficult. So, in such case, we will be representing that with simple line segments irrespective of their characteristics okay so the combination of that uh, uh, line segments will be called as graph okay so the elements okay so the line segments so suppose uh, if this is a generator okay so if this is a generator and uh, it was connected to some load through a transmission line okay so simply we will be representing like this Okay, so through a, a simple line segment, that's it. Okay, so these line segments are called elements. Elements. The terminals of these elements will be called as nodes. Now, what do you mean by path? So, path is uh, a subgraph of connected elements. It's a subgraph of connected elements and again what do you mean by subgraph so subgraph is simply the subset of our main graph that's it okay so we need to know what do you mean by graph what do you mean by elements and nodes and finally path okay so i'll repeat again so graph in order to represent the geometrical structure of a network, it is sufficient to replace the network components by simple line segments irrespective of their characteristics. So, these line segments are called elements. The terminals of the line segments will be called as nodes. Now, the path. So, path is the subgraph of connected elements and the subgraph is a subset of graph. So, I hope this is uh, clear for everyone, the basic uh, terminology in uh, graph theory. So, now let us uh, um, find uh, a simple graph then. Okay, so let's have uh, one simple example. So, here is a generator. So, this generator was connected to a bus bar and uh, here we are having a transformer and one more bus here. And uh, this was connected to the other bus through a transmission line at which another generator was connected. Okay, so now uh, there is an interconnection with the other bus like this. Okay, now let me write another generator here. So this, uh, let us assume this as figure A. Okay, so this is our given network, electrical network. Firstly, we need to convert this particular network into, uh, um, you know, so line segments. It should be represented with single line diagram. Okay, so uh, let us name uh, the numbers for the buses. So here is one, two, this is the third bus and fourth bus. So uh, in a single line diagram, we have to consider the buses first. One. 2 and here is 3 and here is 4 okay so now if there is a generator no so three generators were there so default uh, the other terminal will be considered as ground okay so let us assume that uh, as uh, here ground okay so let me tell you so this generator so this generator is connected between bus 1 and reference Okay, so ground. So we can represent like this. 
clear so now there is a transformer next which is connected between bus 1 and bus 2 so simply replace that with a line segment like this clear now uh, a transmission a line is connected between bus 2 to 4 so repeat the same and uh, one more uh, transmission line between 2 to 3 and one more 3 to 4 and look at the uh, second uh, generator which is connected at bus 2 so we need to have one more line segment like this and look at the uh, generator which is connected at bus 4 okay so we need to connect one more line segment like this okay so this figure b is called single line diagram now let us draw the graph for the single line diagram in graph uh, we won't have any buses but we will represent them with the simple nodes let us assume here this node as zero reference node as zero so now we need to consider so let, uh, let me write here so this as bus one this as bus two bus three now here we need to call them as nodes okay right so this is reference node zero now look at the things so one element is connected between one to zero so simply draw a line segment like this now two to zero is another element is there so draw like this there is no element between three to zero so don't write any now go for the fourth node so four to zero now one to two is another line segment 3 to 4 another line segment um, 2 to 3 is over and then 3 to 4 we need to write okay so make it a bit uh, bigger notes there so you can identify and one more element is there between 2 to 4 like this okay so this is called graph this figure c is called graph this is figure b Okay, so this is a single line diagram from which we have derived the uh, graph. So if this graph is specified with the directions, okay, so like this, let us assume the direction uh, like this. Okay, so let me count uh, the elements. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so now all the line segments were given with direction now the graph is called oriented graph clear there is a difference between graph and oriented graph in normal graph you won't have any directions but in oriented graph you'll be having directions okay so now let me tell you how many elements are there so the line segments in graph are called elements i already told you so now in this example how many elements are there seven elements are there so from this graph we can actually draw tree so uh, let me tell you um, the tree so what is the tree so tree is having all the nodes which are present there in the graph but the tree should not have any closed path clear so or else uh, simply we can define a connected subgraph containing all nodes of a graph but no closed path that is called tree okay so we can uh, form a different number of uh, trees depending on the uh, example depending on the graph that we have got okay so um, for simplicity i'm taking one of the simplest uh, paths for the tree so let me write all the nodes first okay so like this whatever the nodes that are present there in the graph you have to take the same number of nodes okay so now uh, by removing which of the elements can we get the open loop okay so here i am excluding elements 5 6 and 7 okay so if so if we do so it seems to be like this okay right so do we have all the nodes yes we have 
and with this configuration do we have any closed path no so this is called one of the subgraphs of your graph okay so called tree this is our tree you can have other other a different form of tree also it doesn't matter but we need to follow the rule that we need to consider all the nodes but there should not be any closed path that's it okay so let me uh, write the elements so numbers 1 2 and 4 okay so these elements okay these line segments of tree are called branches so the elements of tree or the line segments it's not elements okay so the line segments present there in a tree are called branches now what do you mean by elements the line segments which are present there in the graph are called elements okay so now we have excluded the uh, some of the uh, uh, line segments in tree no so let me uh, write them with a dotted line like this so these elements so like uh, in this case 5 6 and 7 so these line segments will be called as links clear which have uh, excluded from a tree so those uh, set of elements will be considered as links so here the links are 5 6 and 7 now uh, uh, we can relate elements with branches and links like this so if we can observe how many elements are there in a graph 7 now how many branches are there in this particular tree 4 1 2 3 4 how many links are there 5 6 7 total 3 so this 7 equal to 4 plus 3 in this way we can relate elements branches and links okay so with this knowledge we can start doing uh, or uh, deriving the incidence matrices okay so let us go with the incidence matrices now okay so first of all in incidence matrices the first combination is uh, element node incidence matrix this is element node incidence matrix this element node incident matrix incidence matrix will be represented by the letter a cap okay so with the previous example only we can derive the uh, element node incidence matrix so here the dimension will be what could be the dimension dimension of this matrix simply because this is the incidence between element and node so the dimension will be e by n so elements by nodes okay so uh, let me have the previous example here so let me draw that again so one uh let i'm drawing the graph okay so this is third node fourth two and four one more element is there okay right so i'm also representing uh the line segments okay or the elements 4 5 6 and 7 okay so i just considered the oriented graph okay so the incidence of elements to nodes is a uh, you know um, this combination so where we can observe element and node okay so this will be Uh, considered in connected graph that means the incidence of elements to nodes in a connected graph okay so that uh, combination if we take and uh, if you if we uh, take the matrix of that combination so that matrix will be called as element node incidence matrix so uh, let me tell you how uh, the incidence matrix can be uh, obtained okay so a cap this is element by node how many elements are there one how many elements how many elements so seven elements are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and how many nodes are there here we need to consider the reference node also so always uh, uh, represent the node with a circle okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 
3 and 4. In order to have a, a smooth kind of explanation, so let me draw the table of the matrix like this. Okay. So here this one is for first element, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth automatically seventh one. So similarly for the nodes, zero, one, two, three. Now you consider the first element, this one. Okay, so first element. So, let me erase because you may think that is an order. Okay, so I don't want to uh, uh, be like that. Okay, so let us consider the first node, first element. So, this first element is connected with, I am redrawing here. Okay, so this is the first element between 0 to 1, right? So, uh, this is, this element direction is towards 1, first node. So, whenever the direction is entering towards the node, so consider that as a negative 1 value. This one as positive 1 value. Okay. So, now, so 1, 1 here. So, this is entering. So, keep minus there. So, rest of the elements, zeros. That means if um, ith element is incident to and oriented away from jth node, then we have to consider plus 1. If any ith element is incident to and oriented uh, toward jth node, if we consider i and j, then uh, we have to consider minus 1. Okay. If there is no incidence between uh, those nodes, uh, th that element with, the with that node, then we have to take 0. So, here uh, this first line segment or first element is not having any interaction with node 2, 3 or 4. So, that's why we keep 0 there. Clear? Now, similarly, if we consider the next element. So, what is the next element? So, the next element is element 2. So, this is connected between 0 and 2. So, direction is towards node 2. So, take minus 1 there. It is not having any interaction with rest of the nodes. So, keep 0. Now, consider the third element between 0 and 4. So, it is entering towards node 4, take minus and rest of the elements, 0. Now, fourth element between 3 and 4 and it is entering towards node 3, keep minus there. So, rest of the elements having no interaction, keep 0. Similarly, fifth element between 2 and 3, it is entering towards 3. So, keep 3 as minus 1, rest of the elements, zeros. Similarly, sixth element, 1 to 2, sorry, here 0, 1 to 2, 1, 2. So, 2 is entering, so keep minus, rest of the elements, 0. Okay, now, seventh element is connected between 2 and 4. Okay, so 4 is entering, so keep minus, rest of the elements, zeros. In this way, we can form element node incidence matrix. So, this is the first type of incidence matrices. And the second type is bus incidence matrix. This bus incidence matrix is represented by the letter A. Clear? This will be represented by the letter A. So, any node of a connected graph can be selected as the reference node. Then, the variables of the other nodes refer to as buses and can be measured with respect to the assigned reference. Okay, so here uh, we have considered 0 as our reference, right? So, how the A can be found? It is very simple. So, write element here and bus here. This is bus. Okay, so all the 7 elements 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 7. And we have excluded that reference node. So, start writing from 1, 2, 3, 4. That's it. It was already determined in the previous case, A prime. Uh, sorry, A cap. So, in this matrix, you just exclude this reference. That's it. Whatever the element, whatever the matrix that you are getting is nothing but your bus incidence matrix. Simply A. 
Now, what is the dimension for A? So, A, what is the dimension? Element by node only. But here, one of the nodes were considered as reference. So, now the count will be n minus 1. So, this is the dimension for A. So, the dimension for A cap is E by n. The dimension for A is E by n minus 1. So, in the previous case, that is A cap, uh, the column of A cap are linearly dependent. Hence, the rank will be less than 1. Okay. The rank of this A cap is less than N. Okay. Now, um, what is the rank of uh, matrix A? So, this is simply N minus 1. Okay. So, rank will be, this is N minus 1. There is nothing but branches B. Okay. So, in this way, we can find um, the rank for element uh, matrix A. Okay. So, now, we can actually uh, differentiate. Okay. So, differentiate uh, in terms of uh, branches and links. So, uh, let me tell you that also. Okay. So, he here I am writing matrix A. So, element by bus. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements are there. First node, second, third and fourth nodes. Okay. So, here is minus 1. Rest of the elements, zeros, uh, 0, minus 1. You can refer. You can refer the, uh, refer the previous slide. Okay. So, I am just redrawing, uh, rewriting the matrix. Okay. So, 0, 0, minus 1, 1. Okay. So, fifth element, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Sixth element, 1, minus 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So, this is the matrix. Okay. Now, so this can be split into two parts. So now, what are the branches of our tree? 1, 2, 3, 4. What are the links? 5, 6, 7. Let us discriminate like this. Let us split the matrix into two parts. Okay, so now, this can be written as AB. Okay, so AB stands for branches. Okay, element bus uh, matrix for branches. This is for AL. Represents for the links. Clear? Yeah. So, this is element by bus. This part represents branches. So, this part represents links. That's it. Okay, so A can be represented as AB and AL. Like this, we can represent bus incidence matrix. Okay. So, next element, next. So, branch path incidence matrix. Okay. So, this branch path incidence matrix will be represented by the letter K. Okay. Now, so the incidence of branches to paths in a tree. In the previous two cases, we have considered the graph. For matrix K, we need to consider tree. So, from the previous example, we can have the tree like this. Okay. So, all the four nodes, including reference, we need to consider. Okay. So, now let me draw the tree like this. And the count for the branches, 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Clear? So, now, this is tree. All right. So, now, uh, K, I, J. So, the elements, how we can write. So, when we put it as 1, if the branch is in the path from J th bus to reference, J th bus to reference and is oriented in the same direction then we need to take plus one k i j will be considered as minus one 
it's an obvious thing that if the branch is in the path from jth bus to reference but is oriented in the opposite direction then we have to take minus 1 now kij will be 0 if the branch is not in the path from jth bus to reference bus that's it okay so uh, let us uh, find a matrix k for our example so branch b stands for branch here now path okay so how many branches are there here how many branches so one two three four so total four branches are there so here write all the four here one two three four branches and you you put the nodes here one two three and then four okay so let me draw the table okay so now consider the first node so in order to reach node 1 to node 0 through the first element okay so it is uh, in the opposite direction so you, you have to take minus 1 here so rest of the uh, elements will be considered as zeros now consider node 2 node 2 to 0 so through element 2 right so here in this example so it is in opposite direction for the path from 2 to 0 so consider minus 1 here rest of the elements put zeros now consider node 3 so from node to node 3 to 0 the path is like this you can observe the yellow line so first fourth element and then you are uh, getting third element there you get node 0 but look at the direction 4 it is in the opposite direction right so you have to take 4 as minus 1 and 3 also in the opposite direction yes okay so you have to take minus 1 here also no interaction with the others so keep zeros now look at fourth element the fourth element is um, it's not fourth element consider fourth node okay so if we consider uh, let me take another color so node 4 so from node 4 to reach node 0 what is the path that is element 3 so it is in opposite direction so you have to take minus 1 here so keep 0 for the rest of the elements so in this way we can find matrix k this is a non singular square matrix with rank n minus 1 clear so the branch path incidence matrix and sub matrix a b sub matrix a b relate the branches to paths yes or no one two three four these are all branches these are all paths okay so we can relate so since there is a one to one correspondence between paths and buses there we can write a b okay so a b into k transpose as u unity or else k transpose is a b inverse like this we can relate okay so the rest of the matrices that is uh, b b cap c c cap so all the four sets will be discussed in the coming video okay so i hope uh, this video will helps you in uh, knowing about the uh, incidence matrices so with these incidence matrices we can actually analyze the power system okay so later uh, with the help of these incidence matrices how the power system can be analyzed and all we will discuss okay so thank you so much for watching this video thanks a lot